King Charles was officially proclaimed as Britain's new monarch on Saturday in a historic ceremony of the Ascension Council that was televised for the first time in history. God Save the King were the words with which those gathered reaffirmed the proclamation made by the clerk of the council. Approved. I now invite Your Majesty to sign both proclamations. Three cheers for His Majesty the King. Hip hip. Hip hip. The throne had passed to the 73-year-old former Prince of Wales following the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, on Thursday and Saturday ceremony marked his former declaration and oath taking at St. James's Palace in London. King Charles was joined by his wife, Queen Consort Camilla, and his son and heir, Prince William, the new Prince of Wales. I, Charles III, by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of my other realms and territories, King, Defender of the Faith, do faithfully promise and swear that I shall inviolably maintain and preserve the settlement of the true Protestant religion as established by the laws made in Scotland in prosecution of the claim of right, and particularly by an act intituled an act for securing the Protestant religion and Presbyterian church government, and by the acts passed in the parliament of both kingdoms for union of the two kingdoms, together with the government, worship, discipline, rights, and privileges of the Church of Scotland. So help me God. Charles said his mother, who died on Thursday in Balmoral, aged 96, gave an example of lifelong love and of selfless service that he promised to emulate. I know that I shall be upheld by the affection and loyalty of the peoples whose sovereign I have been called to be, he said. He added he was profoundly encouraged by the support of his beloved wife. My mother gave an example of lifelong love and of selfless service. My mother's reign was unequalled in its duration, its dedication and its devotion. Even as we grieve, we give thanks for this most faithful life. I am deeply aware of this great inheritance and of the duties and heavy responsibilities of sovereignty which have now passed to me. In taking up these responsibilities, I shall strive to follow the inspiring example I have been set in upholding constitutional government and to seek the peace, harmony and prosperity of the peoples of these islands and of the Commonwealth realms and territories throughout the world. To confirm my willingness and intention to continue the tradition of surrendering the hereditary revenues, including the Crown Estate, to my government for the benefit of all, in return for the sovereign grant, which supports my official duties as head of state and head of nation. Held in a grand room at St. James's Palace, decked out in crimson and gold, the accession council took place in two parts, the first of which Charles was absent while they proclaimed him king. The clerk of the council announced that Prince Charles Philip Archer George is now, by the death of Our Lady Sovereign of Happy Memory, become our King Charles III. God save the king. The assembled councillors then repeated, God save the king. 
Whereas it has pleased Almighty God to call to his mercy our late Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth II, of blessed and glorious memory, by whose decease the crown of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is solely and rightfully come to the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George. We, therefore, the Lords Spiritual and Temporal of this realm, and members of the House of Commons, together with other members of Her Late Majesty's Privy Council, and representatives of the realms and territories, aldermen and citizens of London and others, do now hereby, with one voice and consent of tongue and heart, publish and proclaim that the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George is now, by the death of our late sovereign of happy memory, become our only lawful and rightful liege lord, Charles III. God save the King. God save the King. On Friday, the King held his first audience with British Prime Minister Liz Truss at Buckingham Palace soon after he was greeted with applause and cheers by large crowds scattered at the palace gates in mourning for the Queen and to catch a glimpse of the new monarch and his Queen consort. While formal details are to be released by Buckingham Palace, it is expected that the Queen will lie in state at Westminster Hall in London for the public to pay their respects. In the coming days, the Queen's coffin will depart her Balmoral estate for the Palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh, the official residence of the British monarch in Scotland. From here, it will be taken in procession to St Giles Cathedral in the city, where the Queen will lie at rest, allowing the public to view her coffin. The coffin will then move to London, ready for lying in state for around four days before her funeral.